recording. Good morning, Queenstown. Good morning, Kimmy. Good morning. Good morning. Kia ora. Kia ora. How's it going? How are you down there? Is it a nice day in Queenstown? Nice morning? Uh, not too bad. It's um, a little bit overcast, but it'll burn off a bit later. It should be quite nice today. It's the same as uh, what it's looking like here in Rotorua. And I can see the participants arriving. Good morning, Morena from Rotorua. Look, it's seven o'clock here in the morning, but we thought this was a fantastic opportunity um, to have a nice drop of central Otago um, Pinot Noir from Gibson Valley. What do you think of that, Nigel? I think you're right on the money this morning. Did you notice the glasses, Nigel? Yeah, you've done very well. <laughs> Taking a bit of Queenstown to Rotorua. Oh, absolutely. Hey, so good morning, everyone. Morning, Kimmy, uh, coming to us good from morning. Tourism New Zealand, North America. Where are you this morning, Kimmy? Currently in New Zealand, in um, the beautiful Tairawhiti region. So not quite Queenstown, North Aotearoa, but um, close enough to Aotearoa. Fantastic. Okay, well, look, let's get this underway. Hey, look, we're really thrilled that you all are all here joining us this morning. Fantastic excuse to have a delicious glass of Central Otago Pinot Noir at seven o'clock, I say. Um, look, we are really excited to be here, particularly because it's been award season here in New Zealand. So um, while we've been sort of hibernating down here in the bottom of the world, um, it's been award season and we have some experiences, including canopy tours. Uh, we've got Paul and we've got Sam from Rotorua Rafting um, who've taken out some fantastic awards that we're going to talk about this morning, um, including some accolades with TripAdvisor, Best of the Best Awards, uh, Rotorua Rafting. Put your hand up, Sam. You're mirrored, so I'm going to confuse it. Um, second Best Overall Experience in the World and Canopy Tours world's number one nature activity that's a little bit exciting and nigel down in queenstown there the world's best wine tour so congratulations guys so yeah really thrilled to be doing a little bit of a deep dive into that and we're also going to show you today how you can package rotorua and queenstown together for your clients because Look, I think it goes without saying, I hope that any trip to New Zealand for your clients or you should include both Rotorua and Queenstown. So we're gonna show you how you can package those all together. Um, but before we do that, Kim is going to talk about the border because I know that that's a little bit of a hot topic. When's that gonna open? So Kimmy is going to give us a little bit of a border update. So let me just grab that slide. And kia ora everybody, nice to see you all and a few of you I would have seen over the last few months during our space webinars. Um, I wish I had exact dates for you, which is a million dollar question right now, but um, once that slide comes up, it's just going to show you a bit of a timeline as to how we're going in terms of our border um, update. Currently, I think I read yesterday, we have about 3 million New Zealand um, eligible population New Zealanders vaccinated, which is great. So what's happening in New Zealand is the next couple of months is um, vaccination, vaccination, and we're really confident come early new year, come February, March, we'll have some really clearer guidelines as to what that could look like for your clients. So the Prime Minister came out a couple of months ago with a, a plan to reopening and reconnecting to the world. So as our vaccines ramp up, that's going to get a lot clearer for you and how that can look for your clients once they're looking towards that New Zealand um, holiday. But um, so no definite date just yet, but not too far away, I don't think. But it's really exciting to be able to showcase uh, Rotorua, which is my hometown in Queenstown, which is um, probably one of my favourite destinations in New Zealand to visit as a Kiwi. So any questions, pop them in the Q&A box, but I'll pass on back to Lou. And um, yeah, keep in touch. And thank you for joining and taking the time to learn more about these fabulous regions. Oh, she's on mute. She's on the mute. I think after 20 months of this, I would have nailed the coming off mute, right? Um, so look, we're really excited as well. Look, trust us, we miss you as much as you miss coming down and sending your clients here. Um, but yeah, let's dive in. Let me set the scene and tell you a little bit about Rotorua. And then we're going to have a chat with these lovely gentlemen behind me. Um, Kimmy or Alex, can I just get you to confirm that I've shared the right screen? I always get a little bit of angst about this. I think I have. Um, all looking good at your end? That must be a yes, they're on, yes. on, on quite. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's set the scene. So um, where is Rotorua and how do you get to Queenstown from Rotorua if you're going to package that together? So let's have a little chat about that. Where is Rotorua? 
Rotorua is located in the North Island of New Zealand, south of Auckland, our main international airport. You can fly Auckland to Rotorua, it's a 45 minute flight, or you can drive through beautiful countryside, it's a 3 hour and 20 minute drive, there's stunning scenery and gorgeous towns to look at along the way. Rotorua also has direct air connectivity down to Wellington, our capital city, that's a 1 hour and 15 minute flight. Or you can fly direct from Rotorua to Christchurch, our garden city, that's a 1 hour and 55 minute flight. And so now your clients want to go from Rotorua to Queenstown. How do you do that? Well, at the moment, you have to go back up to Auckland and fly Auckland to Queenstown. That's a one hour and 50 minute flight. Or you can go from Wellington down to Queenstown, again, a direct flight. That's a one hour and 25 minute flight. Or you can go from Christchurch and that's a one hour flight time direct to Queenstown. So there you go, that's how you include both Rotorua and Queenstown on your clients' itineraries. Okay, I've got a little poll for you all. Really keen to see who has actually been to Rotorua. So they should be popping up on your screen right now. A little poll, just keen to see a quick show of hands by pushing a button, um, who has been. Oh, not yet, there's a few not yet. Lots of people have, that's exciting, awesome. Well, let's take you on a little road trip and show you. So 69% of people have been to Rotorua. Oh, there's some more votes coming in. Cool. Look, well, you know where we are. We've just shown you a little map, but let's drill down on, um, on the actual destination. So the key thing for Rotorua is that we are super accessible, and that's because of our central North Island location. Now, Rotorua is the perfect base for all of your North Island adventures. What a lot of visitors will do is stay in Rotorua and do day trips to places like Hobbiton. That's an hour and a quarter's drive from here. Waitomo Cave, stunning glowworms. That's two hours away or Taupua, which is the largest lake in New Zealand, is one hour south of here. But of course, we're also one hour's drive to beautiful beaches in and around Tauranga and at Mount Monganui. But once you're here, and I think this is something our visitors really appreciate, it's really easy to get around. Um, our activities and accommodation are really in close proximity. You can expect to drive 10 to 20 minutes from one place to the other. If you're going to Rotorua Canopy Tours, it's another 10 to 15 minutes to your place, Sam. So it's really easy to navigate your way around. So just looking at the poll, 60 59% of people have been here, 31% of people are sitting on the edge of their seats and will be looking to put together an itinerary once this webinar is finished, I'm sure. Um, so once you're here, there's a ton of stuff to do and I'm going to dive into that a little bit. Um, I think what a lot of visitors find really interesting is the history we have here, history that's relative of course for New Zealand. Um, it is the birthplace of New Zealand tourism right here in Rotorua. People have been coming here since the 1800s from all over the world and back then it was for our spa and wellness as well as our geothermal and Māori culture but now we've really expanded what we have to offer, you name it, you can do it here in Rotorua. We're a year round destination, um, certainly these two will testify any time's a good time of year to go whitewater rafting or zip lining in an ancient forest. Um, we have four distinct seasons here. I'd say my favorite time of year, what I would always recommend is to come in spring, which is September to November for us, so right now, and fall, which is March through to May. Um, a little bit quieter then, uh, Kiwis or New Zealanders like to travel kind of November through to about February. How long do you spend in Rotorua? The answer to that is three days. Um, and that is just because there is so much to do here. Fun fact, more to do here in Rotorua than any other destination in New Zealand. So what is there to see and do? First up, geothermal activity. We in Rotorua sit on one of the world's most active geothermal fields. It's stunning and it's really fascinating. Um, we are home to the world's largest and most active geyser uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Sorry, the largest and most active geyser in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, that is called Pohutu Geyser, and you can find that at Tapuya. But not only do we have erupting geysers, we've got bubbling mud, steaming hot mineral pools like the one you can see in front of you at Waiotapu Thermal Wonderland, and we've got a number of geothermal parks to explore, and I've listed those on the screen there. Um, so really amazing for your visitors to get up close in a personal way, in a safe way, um, to see the beauty of the geothermal environment. 
Now, a lot of visitors coming from all over the world, one of the key reasons they'll come to New Zealand is to immerse themselves in the world of the Māori, the Indigenous people of New Zealand. And the best place for your visitors to immerse themselves in New Zealand's unique and very beautiful culture in a very authentic way as a traveller, not as a tourist, um, is here in Rotorua. So Māori culture really comes to life here. We have lots of authentic opportunities to engage with Māori. We've got award-winning Māori cultural experiences, we're immersive where your visitors can interact and engage. Um, visitor activities as well that will cater to all types of visitors. Um, why is Māori culture so vibrant here? Well, 33% of our population here in Rotorua is Māori and we're actually a bilingual city, Karawe. Awesome. Um, we're really proud of our cultural diversity. Uh, we love to share it with our manuhiri, our tourists. And as you can hear me using a few Māori words here, um, I can just about promise you that your visitors will leave, your guests will leave knowing a few words in te reo Māori. The ability to connect with nature here is just outstanding. Look, we're a lake and a forest district. Fun fact, uh, we actually have 18 lakes here in the Rotorua region. We've got beautiful forests, uh, plantation and exotic native. You can get up close and personal here with glowworms. You can see a kiwi bird and check out our stunning nature reserve. So there's, there's no shortage of wow moments. If you want to relax though, we're just as good at doing adventure and participating in our incredible environment as we are as relaxing. And we have fabulous indulgent options. And that is of course, largely thanks to the geothermal activity that we have in our area. You can bathe in natural hot mineral pools. That really is a New Zealand must do. Uh, if anyone here is a Suits fan, I am, I was a big fan of Lewis, um, you can even do a little bit of mudding here in Rotorua, um, pretty special to bathe in a hot mud pool, you can do that at Hell's Gate, um, has very rejuvenating and youthful properties, we're all well into our 90s but our skin <laughs> is looking really sharp. Thanks to the uh, geothermal and the mudding, right boys? Yeah. 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 Um, we also have Polynesian Spa, which is located on the shores of Lake Rotorua. Um, so our city is actually named after a lake and Polynesian Spa is one of the world's best stars, uh, according to one of the world's best spas, according to Condé Nast. Now adventure, and I know Queenstown coins the term um, home of adventure, but look, we've got it all here as well, um, from soft adventure through to super hardcore. And just like Queenstown, um, actually I was down in Queenstown about three or four weeks ago with Nigel and Alex, um, and look, just amazing stuff down there as well. We've got epic mountain biking in New Zealand, and we are in fact the world's best year round mountain bike destination. Uh, in terms of whitewater rafting, as uh, I'm sure Sam here can testify, we've got some of the world's best whitewater rafting on the Kaituna River. Um, we've actually got the world's tallest commercially rafted waterfall here in Rotorua, tallest in the world um, at seven metres, and you'll see a video of that soon. So yeah, we've got adventures on land, water, in the air. You can do an ecological zipline adventure in an ancient forest. That's a must. Paul's going to tell you about that soon. Um, and we also have Rotorua Invented Adventure right here. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of Zorbing when you hop inside a giant inflatable ball and fling yourself down a hill. That was invented here in Rotorua and is another must do. Of course, we've got Skyline Rotorua. We've got the, Lu the uh, world's longest luge tracks. Um, and look, I could talk all day just about the adventure that we've got here. So there's a little list. Um, and actually, that's probably quite a nice place to introduce you to Paul. So I've got Paul Button and Sam Sutton. You couldn't make that up, could you? I think someone should write a book about these two. Uh, so Paul Button and Sam Sutton. And um, we're going to start with Paul. And we're going to have a look at Rotorua Canopy Tours. We're going to have a chat with Paul and learn all about the secret to their success but just to set the scene, here's a little video about Rotorua Canopy Tours.
that video makes me want to hop into the forest and drive 10 minutes and go do that. <laughs> you want to come on in a little bit? Hey, Paul, congratulations. Uh, world's 11th best experience, according to TripAdvisor. Um, that was for the Ultimate Tour. World's number one nature activity. And also, you were a Cormark 100% Pure New Zealand award winner. That's, we certainly were very lucky. Very that's lucky. pretty amazing. Hey, I have got some questions for you. Mm -hmm. um, hey, so look, firstly, a massive congratulations. Um, really, really proud of you and the team. I know you work really hard. Um, in terms of you've just been operating for three years and the Ultimate Tour, well, the Ultimate Tour has been operating for three years, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And in three years already, it's been voted the world's number one nature activity and the 11th best experience on the planet. So... I suppose my first question is, fess up, what's the secret? Well, for, at, at Canopy Tour, as you know, our, uh, we strive every day to deliver the best visitor experience on the planet, and that's our team's mantra, you know, and we bring people into that forest and we connect them. Like, for us, we have the series of zip lines and bridges, um, but for us, it's not about that. It's about the human connection and taking people out of their comfort zone. So the secret to success, I guess, is just living, living to that, you know, and striving every day to do the best we possibly can, like, both products are fundamentally very similar in terms of the visitor experience where the ultimate is is a bit more uh you know a bit more how would you say physical it's a bit higher it's a bit longer and it's got a few extra features like a tandem zip line a controlled descent and mm. a couple other things like that but they're both incredible and and for the trip advisor i guess in itself we uh you know we encourage re reviews we've had nearly six thousand reviews over the last eight years 98 percent of five star like we've and every single one we've replied to, you know, so we've got a really good uh, strategy in that sense to encourage the reviews and to get our um, clients talking about us and create that word of mouth. So you've got two products, hey, you've got the original tour and you've got the ultimate tour and that's the ultimate tour that's kind of knocked it out the park, really. Yeah, the ultimate tour is the, the 11th best in the world. And then uh, the original Canopy tour, which was the one that we started with, that's the, that was named the number one nature experience in the world, which is, which is pretty ah, epic. Pretty gnarly, all right. How are you planning to stay brilliant? Oh, well, I don't, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, through COVID and through everything else, we've just stuck to what we know. We just continue to deliver that visitor experience and to really focus on it. Like our guides are really engaged and they really buy into what we do. We've got a really strong conservation component within the, the forest and the organization. We've spent over half a million dollars in conservation activity in the last eight years. Uh, that's removing pests and predators and things like that to restore the forest back to sort of a, an original health, you know, to the health of before humans arrived. And we'll continue to do that because for us, it's really important. I guess it's, it's our why. And it's actually a really nice lead-in because I wanted to talk to you about sustainability. And I know that's a real buzzword at the moment, but your team, I think above any other team I've met, your, your team is so mm -hmm. dedicated to sustainability and conservation. So, so what sets Rotorua Canopy Tours apart from other tourism businesses that espouse that sustainability? Uh, so it's a good question. I, I think for us, you know, it's um, it's a real driver for what we do, and it's a very genuine effort. You know, like I think in New Zealand tourism, there's probably you know we're probably one of the top three businesses for regenerative tourism or that conservation type tourism. And for us, it's just real. You know, like we've we've got this forest, and it's about two hundred hectares. Prior to us uh, operating it, there's no control of the um, ground dwelling predators. And through the years, we've removed as many as we can to let the bird life flourish. And, and in return, you know, a forest that was silent with zero birds. Now we have birds uh, feeding from our hands. We have rare species coming back. We just had a, 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 um, a mushroom that's never been seen before found in the forest. We found skinks that haven't been seen for 30 odd years. Like the forest is flourishing and it's really healthy. And, uh, and as a client of the Manuheri, as they come through the experience, they actually get to be a part of it. Like I said, feeding the birds little worms from their hands to touch and feel that the forest floor and the canopy layers, it's really magical. It's a really tactile, hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. And that connection, like I just feel at one with the forest mm -hmm. and the universe when I'm on canopy tours. Hey, um, I love going there and interacting with your staff. They're, they're, they're mega bird nerds, mm -hmm. hey? They're kind of half human, half bird. Um, what, what is on the must-have list of qualities in a canopy tours team member? Well, we've got the, uh, you know, we've got the zip lines, so we've got that full technical element, you know, where they've got to make sure people are safe at heights and make sure everybody is, you know, and engaging, having a really good time. So there's really strong people skills. But for us, it's about that connection with nature and living our purpose, which is connecting people, you know, and, and I think, in, you know, in the last eight years, we've done a really good job ensuring we're the right people in our right team. And, and they're lots of fun, you know, they're all Kiwis. They just love where they're from. They love who they are. They love the native forest and they love bringing the Manuheri into the forest and 
showing them our biodiversity challenges, taking them out of the comfort zone and the zip lines and just engaging them and making sure everybody has a really nice time. Amazing. Okay, I've got last question for mm -hmm. you. Tell me in three words, what has winning all of these awards, what has this meant to your team? Oh, that's a, that's a tough, tough question. I think uh, probably for me, it, it was humbling. Like it was, it was incredible uh, for the team. It's something they never thought they'd experience before to be in an activity that is named by, you know, TripAdvisor's, uh, you know, essentially the um, overarching review side in the entire world. It holds a lot of weight. And, and as a business leader, I never felt that I'd ever operate an adventure tourism business that could ever receive an accolade like that. So it's incredibly humbling for the team that is here now, but for the team that have been here for the last eight years and to the to the director, James Fitzgerald, who some of you may know, for his vision to to create the best visitor experience on the planet and for us to sort of to live in, to breathe that and to carry it out. Well, congratulations. Thank and you. thanks for amazing. sharing your um, part of your story this morning. Uh, top tip from me, go follow these guys on um, Instagram. You really get an insight into the team culture and the quirkiness of all the staff and the, it, it's fantastic. So um, brilliant. All right. How about we have a chat with you, mister? Hey, before before we meet Sam and have a chat with him, let's, um, let's see a little video that shows what uh, Rotorua rafting is all about. Oops, not that one. This one. How much fun did that look? I'm just going to move slightly out the way. You stay there, Paul, but I'll bring you in now, Sam. Hey, Sam, congratulations. And I know that in your personal life, you know all about winning awards. So if you're watching and you didn't know, this guy here is a four-time world extreme champion kayaker. Is that right? Yep, yep. Fantastic. Right. So you're a bit of a lover, eh, of, of being in the water, being in vessels. Um, it seems like that you've cleverly turned your hobby, your passion, um, into... What you do every day? Yeah, well, it's quite a funny story actually. I grew up in Orkney Falls, right beside uh, the where the Kaituna River starts, and basically the Kaituna River provided me with the skill set to travel the world. And um, so I've, I've been to over thirty different countries kayaking. Love um, paddling in the US and, and exp exploring your rivers from the west to the east coast. Um, and then I basically took that skill set and I just wanted to show the world how amazing the rivers are. And the best river I found on my travels for offering a commercial whitewater rafting trip uh, was right at home. So Amazing. it was a pretty easy um, transition to set up a, a rafting company. And what a what a rafting company. This year you got, I just need to check this because you've won so many awards. Top two, a second best experience in the world out of all of the categories with TripAdvisor. Um, and number one experience as well in the South Pacific. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, congratulations. Right. Hey, Sam, I know you're a Māori boy, and I know you're very, very proud of your Māori heritage. Um, do visitors get to experience Māori culture through Rotorua rafting? Yeah, we do actually offer quite a, a unique blend of rafting and Māori culture all mixed into one. So to give you an understanding, um, 30 generations prior to myself was a chief called Tutea Mutu, and uh, he actually had a tribe right around the river and they had a belief that when they passed they should return life back to the river and we we kind of bring that culture or that history from 30 years prior and show our respect and give people an understanding because the Kaituna river that we raft was actually the access way from Māori when they arrived at the shores mm -hmm. of the from the Pacific island they migrated inland right into Rotorua so it was a very unique stepping stone and that's kind of the history that we like to bring into our trip but in a really fun loving just go out there and um, blow the socks off everybody basically <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they get ripped off but yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, look, there's a lot of incredible places and certainly you've rafted all around the world. Um, but there's there's quite a few rafting companies here in Rotorua and we all do a fan, they all do a fantastic job. But 
what does Rotorua rafting do that's unique? You know, kind of what's your standout amongst other products? Yeah, so for the rafting industry in New Zealand, it's actually world leading just because of um, government regulations that came in in the 90s and really stepped, elevated our game. So we are at the at the top of the world for um, rafting safety, guide cultural, guide training. Um, and prior to me starting, there were a few other rafting companies operating on the Kaituna River. But I just saw this gap that it was like, people focusing on taking our clients down the river as fast as they can. It was more like of a numbers game. And I thought there was quite an opportunity mm -hmm. to really immerse people into the river and show them like how amazing a river can be. And that's what we set up to do. So our goal was just to provide the best experience that our visitors would um, have during the New Zealand holiday. And um, that was by immersing them in the river, letting them swim rapids, doing a lot of surfing and just adding a lot of extra benefits that you don't really normally get in a rafting yeah. experience. And that's what elevated Rotorua Rafting from um, being the, the one of the youngest rafting companies on the river to, to being out in front. Tell me about those rapids, because we've got a number of different rapids and different grades where you do rafting, hey? Yeah, so so the beauty of the Kaituna is it is, it is grade five rafting. So that does put a lot of people are a little bit fearful of that um, and the reason why it's a grade five it boasts the world's highest commercially rafted waterfall not only is it the world's highest commercially rafted waterfall but Rotorua's highest commercially rafted waterfall <laughs> now um, with that though it's a very unique riverbed so a lot of other rivers are made from boulders and that's where you get these um, hazardous conditions and the Kaituna is a it's I've never seen a river in the world that is like it's a very single channel very safe riverbed so it enables us to take people that can't even swim down the river in a safe environment um, so we do have grade five sections but the second half of the rivers are grade three so it's perfect for your kind of ages from 10 to 12 mm. and then the the grade five sections for anybody from 13 older the oldest we've taken is uh 86 years old so pretty wide demographic they were american as well so they're hardcore <laughs> awesome hey um last question from me and then i've got some rapid fire questions of both of your experiences a little birdie tells me you've got something in the pipeline sam yeah so obviously i've got a very deep tie to okiri falls um and I love it, that area. And so we just wanted to elevate um, our mission out in Orkiti Falls, which is our hundred year vision is to enhance the the, uh, the river quality back to a state that our great grandchildren will be able to drink from the river that they raft. And in part of that, we're actually adding a zip line to it to compete with old mate Ooh. Paul over here. But I don't think we'll be competing. <laughs> They're gonna be quite unique, um, different experiences. Um, and so, yeah, we're actually just, hooked up the first line and went for a little hoon last night actually late late last evening and oh my god can't believe it so uh after you come rafting you have to come for a zip line if you uh check out zip lining over waterfalls basically amazing mm. sounds fantastic brilliant right i've got some rapid fire questions i want to bring this back down to a practical element i'm going to kick off with paul I've got some rapid fire questions on canopy tours. Are you ready, Paul? Yep, ready. Okay, let's go, let's go. Paul, how long does your experience take? Three hours to and three and a half hours. For someone visiting Rotorua, how do they get to Rotorua canopy tours? We pick them up. Any age restrictions? Uh, six years is the youngest and 93 is the oldest. Are you willing to beat that, beat that 93 record? But we can beat that, okay. we can push that. <laughs> Any height or weight restrictions? Uh, weight restrictions, 267 pounds. Any fitness or mobility requirements? Uh, you need to be able to lift your knees and walk a mile or two. I think I said it in the video, but what is your tour size? Uh, we take small groups. We take small groups of 10 and we always, every tour is guided. We have two guides. And how much is it? Uh, it's between $159 New Zealand and $200 New Zealand, or that's around $100 to $150 US. Does Canopy Tours operate in all weather conditions? We love it. Yeah, the forest gets better when it rains. So it's just perfect wet weather activity and perfect winter activity. Do you have any spiders or snakes? Last question. Uh, no snakes, no bears or anything exciting like that. But we do have spiders, but no spiders that will kill you. But just recently we found a little spiders that half an inch wide that was uh, new to science a tunnel web spider. Oh, i read that in the news it's very exciting i love it natural news find yeah. new species in the forest okay sam you ready yeah how long does your experience take you need to allow two hours 
for someone visiting Rotorua, how do they get to Rotorua rafting? We'll pick you up from anywhere in central Rotorua or you can drive out to us. Good coffee shop next door too. Yeah. Any age restrictions? Uh, 13 and above or 10 from halfway. Any height or weight restrictions? 280 pounds. Any fitness or mobility requirements? Moderate level of fitness is good. I did it, so anyone will be fine. Uh, what is the size, what's your tour size, group size? Yes, yeah, so we can handle anybody from two clients right up to 60 clients. Price? Uh, 50 bucks US. Fantastic. Does your weather operate, sorry, does your experience operate in all weather? We do operate all weather. Best thing you can do on a rainy day. Um, and any sharks in the Kaituna River? There are no sharks, just a few tanifars swimming in the river. I think you better explain what a tanifar is. Mythical creature that likes to give you a little uh, tap every now and again. He's kidding, guys. He's kidding. He's totes kidding. Fantastic. All righty. Thank you very much. Hey, that was great. Really enjoyed talking to both of you. Thank you for your time. What I'm going to do now is it's just about time to zoom down to Queenstown, but I'm just going to um, finish off the Rotorua section for you. So, um, that's pretty much it. That's the Rotorua part over. Where can you find more information? Well, our website's a great place to start. There's Destination Rotorua's website there, rotoruanz.com. You can find the travel section as well. And hot off the press, I've been inspired by Queenstown. Um, I have set up a Destination Rotorua travel sellers group on Facebook. Please come and join the fun. There's only five people in there at the moment. So I'd love to have some more people in there too um, to share Rotorua with. Um, but look, if you want to get in touch with me, um, talk to some of our trade ready operators, most of our experiences here in Rotorua are trade ready, get in touch with me, I'm very happy to connect you with the operators, um, otherwise get in touch with me directly, um, I'm very much here to help support you uh, with sharing this beautiful place that I'm very privileged to call home uh, with your clients. So, with all of that in mind, um, a big thank you from me, and now it's time to hand over to my friends down in Queenstown. Here we are. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Queenstown. I guess first up, Lou's going to run a wee poll, so I guess just to know who's been to Queenstown so far. There we are. So we've got 83% have been, and we've got three that haven't, so we look forward to welcoming you back soon. So first up today for Queensland, we're going to show you a short one-minute video that Lou's just going to play right now. It's there. A feeling that there's more to do. More things to see. Hear the call from the sacred place. Let it wake your senses from a deep sleep and inspire you to go further than you've gone before. This is the place where adventure cascades down mountains and into bloodstreams. Each moment invites you to live larger than you've ever dreamed. Here, you'll meet someone new, the person you've always wanted to be. Welcome to Queenstown, the home of adventure. Awesome. So firstly, here we are, we've got just a bit of a geographic map here of Queenstown. So as you will see, the Queenstown International Airport is located just a short 15 minutes drive from downtown Queenstown. And you can access this with easy shuttles, taxi services, bus or buses or rental cars. And for your clients that choose to drive, you can experience a beautiful southern scenic route through Otago and Southland or go down this South Island from the West Coast or Canterbury, which is a stunning way to arrive in Queenstown. Here you can see there's also Arrowtown, which is a 20 minute drive from Queenstown. And at the top of the lake there, you can see the Norpe, which borders our world heritage area of Te Waipadamu, which is only 45 minutes from Queenstown. As well, as you can see, Gibson Valley to the right, which is, which is our Valley of Vines, which is only a 25 minute drive from Queenstown. And we'll talk more about that with Nice 
shortly. Yeah. Next one, Luzo. <laughs> She's too busy yarning, isn't she, talking? So the beautiful thing about Queenstown is it's famous for being New Zealand's favourite four season destination with four distinct and unique seasons. Queenstown has year round appeal, which is pretty amazing. We enjoy, enjoy a continental style climate with long hot summers and cool crisp winters. Queenstown truly offers something for every season with very few activities not being able to be enjoyed all year round. So as you would have seen, Queenstown is recognised as a home of adventure. It's forged an enduring reputation as a world leader in adventure tourism. The region is home to many firsts, which includes the world's first commercial jet boating and bungee jumping operations, and New, Ze New Zealand's first commercial ski field, river surfing, rafting, paragliding, and skydiving. The diverse natural environment sets the stage for a range of year-round high-octane activities, which is, as you can see, someone's bungeeing off, off that platform there, which is quite scary, in my opinion. <coughs> awesome. And next up, we have a lot of biking opportunities here in Queenstown. We have an extensive network of trails, from short scenic rides to longer multi-day adventures. You can choose guided rides, or you can set your own pace and explore over 130 kilometres of biking trails in New Zealand, which, is, which has the Queenstown Trail, which is one of New Zealand's great rides. We also have mountain biking with three aerial assisted lifts that you can access within close proximity to Queenstown, which is pretty exciting if you want something with a bit more adrenaline. Yeah. Golfing. So Queenstown boasts seven spectacular golf courses, including three championship courses and four experience courses, six of which are located within 25 minutes of downtown Queenstown, which makes Queenstown the real premier golfing destination for New Zealand. Not only this, but you know New Zealand is really famous for our beautiful scenery and Queenstown really is no exception. So Queenstown is renowned for all inspiring panoramas and scenery that invite you into nature to explore with our beautiful tracks, hikes and lakes as well. There's three great walks with the Rootburn, the Milford Track and Kepler, which are all accessible from Queenstown in an easy drive. And beyond this, we also have a whole lot of shorter half day hourly walks that are a great opportunity to explore what's on offer here. Yeah. So obviously you guys are going into winter right now and we're just coming out of winter with the last ski field here just closing on Sunday. So Queenstown is home to four ski areas with an easy access on town. Colonic Peak and the remarkable thing in Queenstown and Kadrona and Treble Cove and Wanaka. The travel time ranges from a short 20 minutes to 90 minutes from Queenstown. So it's easy to get up for your spring or winter skiing adventure. Yeah. Something that's really unique about Queenstown is we, we offer some really fantastic day trips. As you can see here, this is Milford Sound, which is one of them, and lots of you have probably heard about it or seen this. For yourself. So this can be accessed by car, coach, or fixed wing plane, rain, hail, or shine. Milford Sound is beautiful in all weather. And beyond this, we also have Lenorke, which we mentioned earlier, which is a fantastic location to visit and only 45 minutes drive from Queenstown. It's on the edge of Mount Aspiring National Park and Fiorda National Park, and is a getaway, getaway to the Waipanamu Waipan World Heritage Area. You can explore by foot, horseback, four-wheel drive, jet boat, canoe, kayak, scenic flight, or even skydiving. So there's plenty for everyone. Awesome. And also we have Arrowtown, which is a short 20-minute drive as well. So finally, before we introduce you tonight, we've got food and wine in Queenstown, which is one of those experiences that aligns with everything that I've just talked about. There are over 150 innovative and award-winning restaurants and eateries to cater for any occasion here in Queenstown. And our local chefs are passionate about using local ingredients in different seasons, always bringing changing to men menus to affect the season's freshest produce. But as you can see here in the picture, Gibson Valley is our wine growing region and only 25 minutes drive from Queenstown. 
The area hosts some of the world's best Pinot Noir, and there are countless vineyards to sample wine from when you explore Gibson Valley and beyond. And that's quite topical and timely, as we'd like to introduce Nige from Altitude Tours to tell you a bit more about this here in Queenstown. So, this is really exciting. So, first up, we'll hand over to Lou, who's going to play a quick one. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Yeah, yes. quick one in the video. <laughs> There we go. Not bad, is it? <laughs> oh, you've got the wine loop. Perfect. Got the the wine. Here oh, the guys have got it all. Altitude glasses. And look, Gibson Valley Pinot Noir. Nothing like a glass of wine at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah we're on the water here. Yeah, we, the water. We, we probably should be on the wine as well, but we'll wait for the end of the webinar. No, no drinking and talking. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> we do things a bit different here in Queenstown. We're by bottles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Altitude Tours. So, as you guys are probably here, they've won a range of awards this year. They're the world's number one best TripAdvisor wine experience with their wine sample tour. Best of the best as well. Number four best experience in New Zealand. And you're also a finalist for the New Zealand Tours Awards and the Queensland Business of the Year Awards, which are both happening in November, which is pretty exciting. And also, Number eight, best experience in New Zealand for Milford Sound Day Trip as well. So you also look at that, which is pretty amazing. So pretty happy to be here with you, Nige. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. Nice to, nice to talk to you all. So yes, first off, we'll run into a few questions. So you've been involved in the tourism industry for 20 years now. Do you want to give us an overview about what you've been doing? Who've, who'd you been throwing people off bridges and buildings? Safely, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've um, been involved in tourism for 20 years. Um, started here, right here in Queenstown at the Caldale Bridge, working in the raft, uh, rescuing people that were bungee jumping off the, the bridge, the world's first commercial bungee. And I did that for a few years, and that sort of got, my, uh, got me interested in tourism. And I started to work inside AJ Hackett and ended up traveling all over the world, helping AJ set up sites in Sochi and Russia, China, Singapore, and during that time, I picked up a lot of sort of really good ideas which from other locations in the world. And when I moved back to Queenstown, I thought, well, I'm going to actually use some of these ideas and actually create my own tourism business right here. And so four years ago, we started Altitude Tours. And um, a lot of the things that were put into Altitude and a lot of the sort of the, the secret to its success has actually been born from uh, 20 years of sort of like gathering and stealing ideas from everywhere I've traveled and all around the world. And so I were really happy to be um, acknowledged with the awards, especially with COVID being so hard on tourism. It sort of like gives us faith that we're on the right path and that uh, when, when uh, your customers come back, we've got some amazing experiences to take them on and, and to totally blow them away. And hopefully they, they leave um, totally being totally over delivered um, and hopefully go off and tell all their other friends about the most amazing experiences they've had down here in Queenstown. Oh, awesome. And I mean, what better way to do it than have some wine, as Lou's perfectly showing right now. Yeah. So I guess, why don't you start Altitude Tours? Like, what's your vision and mission? Yeah, well, we, we want to make sure, a bit like the guys in Rotorua, we want to do um, small group authentic travel. Um, we really want to make sure we connect with tourists, um, visitors, and we make sure that we actually get them 
into the local community in a really harmonious way. So we've been working really hard on um, making sure the maximum amount of people we take on it to be 16. So if we have more people, we just get more vehicles. We've got 14 vehicles in the fleet taking people on tours down to Milford Sound um, and wine touring, which we'll talk a bit more about later. So we just wanted to make sure that we created the world's best um, small group day tours was essentially the goal. And every day we work towards that and we constantly have that as our mantra that that's where we're trying to head. And if we can get somewhere close to that, we'll be really happy. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, that's fantastic. And I guess, can you give us a quick overview on the tours you run? Yeah, absolutely. So when we started, we predominantly we were just a wine tour company taking people into the Gibston Valley area. And actually we're here at Kinross uh, at one of the cellar doors where you can see all the wine behind. So this is actually where your customers would come and go through a whole wine experience. Uh, this wine here called Bali is actually made by a guy called Grant Taylor, who is the world's most awarded Pinot Noir maker. So there's a really great wine here. And this is just one of the locations that we go on the tour. Uh, we take people to off the beaten track and well-known cellar doors. So you get a bit of a, a contrast with um, you know, the beautiful cave tours and going out into the vines and then we take you off the beaten track to a farmer that's converted his farm into a vineyard and you actually get to meet him personally and taste wines with him. So it's a really nice balance. Um, you go through four different cellar doors um, on the day, including lunch, and then we drop you back to your accommodation. Uh, so that's, the, that's where we started the business. And then we realized that it was working really well and the reviews on TripAdvisor were going so well that we started to take the same philosophy and then roll that into other tours. So we started uh, a twilight tour, which was a late afternoon departure, more of a condensed version, three cellar doors, and you can do local beer or local wine. So a much more relaxed um, version, uh, great for in the winter when you've been skiing in the morning and then you want to do something in the afternoon. So it fits that fits that option really well. And uh, if you've got someone that doesn't like wine, they can now finally go on a tour with their partner that drinks wine because they can drink local beer. And uh, we were the first ones to create that. Then we created a full Monty experience, taking people on an eight hour immersive wine tour for the people that absolutely love wine, they want to know all about it. And then after that, we thought, well, let's just keep rolling this and, and take, you know, doing the same philosophy into other areas. So we do scenic tours down to Glenorchy which is like a real Kiwi experience where you listen to Kiwi music, learning about the local history, having a picnic on the side of a riverbank, and, um, and then making your way back to Queenstown. You also get to see Lord of the Rings movie locations. Uh, and then we just continue to roll it into Milford Sound, which obviously you all know Milford Sound. So we take small group travel down in glass roof vehicles. So we've got um, the only um, luxury Mercedes vehicles with glass roof. Um, so you've got heaps of leg room, leather seats, we call it business class, and we take people down for a 12 hour uh, return trip, including the, the boat cruise in Milford. And we do the same thing up to Milford, up to Mount Cook, day trips to Mount Cook uh, as well. And um, we've got a few other tours that we're currently putting together, which will be um, small group farm experiences, which are very authentic um, and quite unique. And we've got an eco experience, which will uh, get visitors into the local community and help with some of the problems we've got here with wilding pines. So there's a whole lot of stuff that we're trying to do, but again, all around the philosophy of small group travel. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. And I guess, congratulations on winning the world's top wine experience in the 2020 TripAdvisor Best of the Best Awards. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> what makes this tour so special? Well, the wine sample tour is the one that's been uh, it's got all the recognition, so that's the one that was voted the world's best wine experience and the fourth best activity of tour in New Zealand. And it's the sum of all parts. Uh, there's every day we're constantly systemizing the extraordinary and personalizing the ordinary, is a little saying we have. So every aspect of the tour, we're trying to make it unique, whether it be the terms and conditions are full of crea all creative and funny to make you laugh, or the onboard videos that we play which um, set the tone, we're educational, but funny. But one of the core things that we've done with that tour is that we actually created our own accreditation for our guides because we realized that there was a real inconsistency in the wine tour industry with, depending on who took you out that day, it really, it could really um, 
enhance or or um, or to, should sort of ruin your experience. So the the accreditation was created with an external consultant who came in, and we put together a module which was theory based, where they had, their guides have to go into a uh, three day theory lecture style scenario to learn about wine in the world, wine in New Zealand, wine locally, viticulture. So they so they have all the knowledge, but then we moved it into also reading your audience, knowing when they've had enough information, knowing when they need to be entertained. So the, then they, after they learned everything, we put them through a practical where they actually had to turn around and host us. And, and, if, and then we would either you know, pass or fail them or give them extra training. But essentially, the idea behind it is, is that we can guarantee anyone that comes on that tour is we'll get an exceptional guide, not just with knowledge, but with actually being able to host and entertain. Because a lot of people actually just want to be entertained. They want to have a great day. They don't all want um, technical information on wine. So you've got to know who does and who doesn't. And so the guide becomes a, ma a, mas a master wine guide, essentially. And so they all get certified with a certificate, which gets put on the wall in our office. And it's something that they can take away and something that we can do to help grow the guides as well. So that has been probably one of the secrets to our success. And we'll continue to do things like that with all of our tours as we, as we grow and expand. Awesome. Thanks, Doris. I guess we'll just quickly touch on one last question here before we go to the back five questions. I guess, have you had much experience working with the IBO in the wholesale trade space with altitude tours so far? No, we haven't. So it's great to be on this call. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> um, we're, we're relatively young in terms of our business. And we, if anything I've said to you that you guys are interested in, please go back to your, um, your IBOs in New Zealand. Tell them you want to connect with altitude tours. Um, you probably haven't heard of us. We're just reaching out into this market uh, in the last year. Actually, as COVID hit, we were just starting to move into it. So we've got a long journey to go. But at the moment, we'd love to be able to host and look after your customers like we do for our direct customers or the OTAs or the local travel agents. So, um, yeah, thanks. And we look forward to connecting with you very soon. Thanks, that nice. Well, that, I'm sure they look forward to it as well. Exciting. And they've, and they've, they've delivered the coffee. Awesome. So just quickly, we'll go, go, go through some next um, rapid fire questions as well for you. So how long does your experience take? Uh, well, in regard, we'll do it for the wine sampler tour yep. because we've got um, six different tours, but the wine sampler tour is a five hour tour from hotel pickup to hotel drop off. Awesome. Any age restrictions? Well, the only age restrictions are regarding drinking. Um, we've got to be 18 years of age here in New Zealand, so we can take anyone on the tour, but uh, in order to drink, you've got to be over 18. Awesome. Minimum and maximum group size? Minimum group size, one. We do sometimes take one person out and we put them in a nice vehicle and take them on a great day out, but we, the maximum will take is 16 people. Cool. <coughs> How many cellar doors do you visit? Uh, on the sample tour, we visit four cellar doors, uh, all in the Gibson Valley wine region. What, what is the price? It's 189 New Zealand dollars or 135 US as of this morning's exchange rate. Does your experience operate in all weather conditions? Absolutely. Yeah, rain, hail, snow. And that's one of the great things. We don't cancel. Um, unlike some other activities, um, we're not weather dependent. Um, so we can, so as a matter of it's um, snow or sun, we'll take you. Awesome. And I guess, are there any su surprise and delight features? On this tour, yes, uh, again, that's one of the wee um, secret herbs and spices we have on our tours. Every tour, we try and create a surprise and delight feature. We don't market it or advertise it; it just happens on <laughs> tour. There's a lot of things like that that happen. We've got a wee bit of magic the guides do just subtly. But on the sample tour, everyone gets one of these, which is a secure travel container, and inside it is a branded. Altitude Tours New Zealand wine glass, which they can take back, sit in their Manhattan apartment, drink wine, and dream of Queenstown. Or in the virtual destination, uh, virtual office, you can use it as well. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Nigel. It's been really awesome to have you here, and it's great getting up at 6 a.m. to come to a cellar door. What yeah, you, thanks, I mean, everyone. Thanks for. Um, jumping on this webinar and uh, hopefully you've learned some information and uh, if we don't see you we'll see your customers very soon and we'll jump just back to moving i'll just show that final queen sound slide as well just awesome. 
Awesome. So I'll just quickly go over this. So as Lou showed before, we've got a Queensland Travel Sellers Group, which has more members than hers, and she was inspired by us, which is really special. Um, so we're currently at 288 members. So do come and join that group. You can find the link on our website as well as our tra travel trade newsletter sign up. And if you can't find that, then just feel free to get in touch with us after the webinar or head on with all our details on the travel trades space on Queensland NZ website. You'll find everything you need there. So thank you for that and back to Lou. I remember to take myself off mute that times, kicking some goals. Yeah. Um, hey, so now it's time for Q&A. So if anyone's sitting there, um, maybe you're drinking some Central Otago Pinot Noir like us. I'd like to start my day every day like this. Um, fire the questions through. I can see that we've got one already. Um, and just to get you warmed up, I've got a little bit of a question that's going to test how well you are paying attention. So the question is, assuming you fly from Rotorua to Wellington and then Wellington to Queenstown altogether, how long would that flight time be? Would it be one hour and 15 minutes? Would it be three hours or would it be two hours and 40 minutes altogether? Oh, we've got two hours and 40 minutes as the lead horse. We've got coming in close behind one hour and 15 minutes, two hours and 40 minutes. My money's probably on that, which is just as well because that is the answer. Two hours and 40 minutes is the correct answer because Rotorua to Wellington is one hour and 15 minutes. You would then change planes, transit briefly in Wellington, good coffee, good shopping at Wellington Airport. And then it's a one hour and 20 minute flight from Wellington down to the beautiful town of Queenstown. So two hours and 40 minutes. Um, so easy to package everything together. Hey, so just by those question, while those questions are coming in, um, we've got a little prize, a little giveaway that we're going to give away to one lucky webinar um, attendee. So thank you for joining us this morning. Um, in the next couple of days, you will get a follow-up email with a couple of, couple of questions about our amazing destinations and all of the correct answers. They'll be easy, don't worry. Go in the draw to win this gorgeous little goodie bag. And the Queenstown goodie bag is so good. I thought I'd put the Rotorua prizes in there as well. So while the questions come in, we have a beautiful Rotorua face mask. It's got mud in it. Remember, we're all in our 90s. We use these daily. Um, it keeps us looking gorgeous. We've got some special boutique Rotorua chocolate, which has got karengo and macadamia nut in it. We have a beautiful little ceramic Rotorua made Harakiki, which is flax dish. There's so many things in there. There's a little book to help you learn instant Māori. We've got some beautiful kawa kawa balm for the lips um, or any mosquito bites or anything you might have. Um, we have a beaut, I might keep this one, Alex. Um, a beautiful Queenstown um, scarf, which hopefully won't come with my hair on it. Um, we have some lovely images in here of Queenstown. And we also have um, a Queenstown candle, which I happen to know is French pear flavoured, because I have one of these next to my bed on my side table. So there we go. Um, so those will be coming your way um, to one lucky participant in this webinar. Reluctantly, I'd better take that off. Um, in the next couple of days, we'll send out a little follow-up email. So okay, you boys need to make sure that Lou actually sends that one off. Um, it's looking a bit, you know, on the fence there, but um, there's a few questions popping on in. There's another one, I'll just quickly talk about the border, um, the current border about reopening to, to vaccinated tourists. So as I mentioned, New Zealand is currently at 3 million uh, vaccinated, we've got a population of about 5. Um, we are really excited to hear a bit more about the reopening plan come the early few months of next year, and we'll have a lot more to share with you. So a few of you are part of the um, uh, email database from Tourism New Zealand along with the Rotorua and the Queenstown um, page. So between us, we will keep you updated. Um, a few questions for the operators. So Sam, water temperatures, what happens in winter? What happens in summer? Do I get cold? What's the sit show? Yeah, so we're able to raft all year round. In summer, the river is actually 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's the warmest river you can raft in the country and uh, obviously the temperature drops away in winter, but we have a bunch of wetsuits, wetsuit jackets, and that is all complimentary every single trip um, that's part of the tour. And Paul, a similar question, when I turn up to your place, do you make me look awesome? 
and all your gear so I stay on a zip line? Is that the theory? Yeah, that's right, Kim. You, you already look awesome, so there shouldn't be an issue there. But the, um, when you do arrive, we give you um, uh, harnesses, we give you wet weather gear, rain gear. We even have warmth gear. We have fleece, fleeces, um, hats. You know, we've got all, gloves. We've got it all. Perfect. Hey, um, there's one in here, Nigel. If you, um, if you have clients who are really into one particular wine, for example, Pinot Noir, would you tailor a package within your region to suit that? So you would go to different wineries along the route, or how does that look? You personalise private tours as such? Uh, yeah, good question. So we do a lot of private tours. So if someone in particular was into a certain type of wine, e.g., uh, Pinot Noir then we would tailor a uh, wine to a specifically for them uh, and take them to locations that suit them. We actually have the ability to do that a little bit actually on our standard tours as well, where our fourth location at the moment is actually Guide's Choice. So what the guide's doing is he's actually reading the customers, talking to them during the first three locations and then making an educated call on where the fourth stop will be. And, and often so people actually sort of get that personalisation as they go. And then there's also the opportunity for people to have an additional glass of wine over lunch and they can choose whatever they want as well. Perfect. Very good. Hey, um, Lou, could you share a bit more about new accommodation offerings in Aotearoa? Yeah, look, um, it wasn't the best timing in hindsight, but we have a beautiful new five-star accommodation here in the centre of the CBD. I can actually see it as I look out the window, so it's really close. Um, and that is the Pullman of Rotorua from the Accor Group. Um, it's 120 rooms, stunning property, five star, um, nice and central. In fact, I actually stayed there over the weekend. I had a staycation. Um, the food is some of the best I've had in town. Um, so yeah, all ready for those higher end clients. And another great question, and I think both of these destinations, um, are really fortunate with this one, um, but what is the best time of the year to visit uh, Queenstown, Alex? Yeah, so yes, the great thing about Queenstown, we are four season at Alpine Lake Resort, but I think it's a really good opportunity is to come join us in our shoulder season. So as Lou mentioned, that November to February is quite busy for New Zealanders traveling. So coming in that, I guess the, that March to May, June time is a really great opportunity. And also come spring, which we've just come through now in New Zealand. So your, let me do my maths, your autumn, your fall, your fall, and then that sort of thing as well. So I think utilizing those times is really great because I think the great thing about Queenstown as well is you can still ski, you can still bike, you can still do a whole lot of the things that you really want to do throughout most of the year, which is really special. And similar for you, Lou, I think, well, you can talk more, but Rotorua has, again, four seasons in one day mm. and some amazing yeah. natural. Yeah, I'd echo the shoulder season. Again, as Alex said, um, Kiwis tend to holiday sort of December, January, February. Um, so it can get quite quite busy then remembering we're a small country um, but yeah I would recommend spring which is now so September to November is New Zealand spring um, equally our fall which is March to May would be my recommendation so absolutely those shoulder seasons are, are, are great times to visit great and if there's any more questions please pop them in um, now I'm going to throw a curly one in here um, between Lou and Alex, who has the best mountain biking? Us. Uh, <laughs> uh, you've got three mountain bikers here. Do you guys mountain bike? Oh, oh, I, think the, I think Lou, I think the answer is first equal. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're, the, we're not the best. Queenstown is not the best mountain biking destination in the North Island because we're in the South Island. Uh, <laughs> Trust you to say that. Look, we've got 180 kilometres of tracks, um, fantastic year-round mountain biking. In fact, we're just about to host Crankworks. Um, one of you, actually, can you just talk about Crankworks quickly and what that's yeah. all about? Basically, the world's best riders come down to, New, down to Rotorua and they show their amazing talents in a variety of different disciplines within the mountain biking. Uh, so obviously right now it's mostly Kiwis uh, and next year is scheduled for the international field. Look, the, the mountain biking is great in Queenstown, but, you know, first, yeah. let's go for first equal. Yeah, first equal. We'll, we'll okay. agree. We'll we, we can agree on that, can't we? Uh, I think that sounds fair enough to me. Yeah. Cool. Hey, well, I 
don't think there are any more questions. There's just one here about are these experience mentioned today available to book through operators? Um, for the Rotorua operators, Canopy, tour, Canopy Tours is pretty much set up um, trade ready with everybody pretty much. Um, Sam, we're getting there. By the time you want to book your clients, absolutely will be contracted with everyone. So a bit like Altitude, uh, just a little bit of a work in progress at the moment. But look, suffice to say, I think that's the last question. Um, suffice to say, if you're sending your clients to New Zealand, making sure that Rotorua is on the itinerary, Queenstown's on the itinerary, you've seen how easy it is to package it together. Look, you can go to other destinations as well, but make sure they're on there. And um, look, as you've seen today, these three experiences that we've talked about are world class. I didn't make that up. The people said so. They've won lots of awards. Um, I've done them all, as has Kimmy. And let me let me tell you, they are absolutely incredible. Your clients will not be disappointed. Um, so look, with all of that in mind, unless there's anything from Queenstown, I'd like to say a big kia ora, a big na mihi. Um, thank you. It's been amazing to talk to you all today. Look, we really appreciate you being here. Um, come and join my Facebook page. There's a last little plug. Um, I'd love to get more, um, you know, more, more, more. What's the word? Fans than, than Queenstown. Just kidding. There's some very oh. healthy rivalry, as you can see. We all get on like a, um, like a house on fire. So um, anything from Alex and uh, Nigel or Kimmy? Just agree with everything you just said, really. I um, mean, thank you all for being here. And we can't wait to welcome you back to Queenstown. I mean, it's an exciting place and it's here ready, ready for you when you when you can come. Amazing. And and just a thank you for joining. We know you're all getting a lot busier, which is great yeah. news. And um, thank you for taking the time to learn a bit more about these two regions. Again, as we get more information on the border, you'll be updated by a number of different ways, I'm sure. Um, but we're really excited to welcome your clients back to New Zealand. So thank you for sticking with us and um, we look forward to seeing you and your clients sometime next year. Yeah. Matewa, see you soon. Kakite. Kakite.